Is it? <laughs> <Up. laughs> One thing I noticed yesterday with the camera, it kind of made some little buzzing sounds and I think it's the stabilizer. Like maybe it's getting stuck or something like that. I was like, uh oh, is that a sign of things to come with the camera? I hope not. Spent some time today just talking to drones and RC enthusiasts, talking about topics like the Canadian drone laws. It's just nice to know that other people can see how ridiculous a lot of the regulations are. And basically, in my opinion, they need to change some of them to be a little bit more common sense in terms of how regular people use this stuff nowadays. Unless something changes midway or something like that, I guess if you want to operate your drone and stuff legally, you're gonna have to do the test. So as I said yesterday, I did redo the test, knowing how ridiculous and unrelated the questions are. And as you guys know, like I said, the site went down, so I actually only found out my results early this morning because it seems like it updated on itself. And guess what? Who wants to guess? Did I pass or I fail? Well, I guess that's expected. Like I said, since I knew exactly how dumb the questions were going to be, I passed. This time with 80%. So I thought it'd be neat just to show you guys what it looks like. So it says here, it's a pilot certificate. The individual indicated below may exercise this privilege to fly a drone subject to the rules and regulations listed below and set out under the Canadian Aviation Regulations. And you can see they tell you your certificate number, the date it was issued, and they have a little check mark to show what type of flight you can fly. So obviously I just did the basic test, so I can only operate under the basic guidelines. So for example, can't fly in a controlled airspace or within the 30 meters of a bystander. And they actually list the rules and regulations on a certificate, like saying, for example, the pilot must be 14 years, must meet Regency requirements, operating rules, like the line of sight, you know, the funny thing is with these rules that they've written here, this is what like most of that basic test should have focused on, but obviously they didn't. They ask you all these questions about like airplanes and stuff like that. And you can see inside the site, you can actually register a drone, which I haven't done yet. And it shows you your pilot certificate. And there's also a field there, it says flight reviews. What that is, I believe, is for the advanced operation, because for that one, you have to take the test, answer 50 questions, and afterwards, once you pass, you have to actually go to someone, fly the drone, and they'll, I guess, determine, hey, yeah, you're safe to fly, you're good. So that actually requires an in-flight test, to my understanding. So I guess that's official, huh? I'm technically a certified drone pilot. Even though realistically, I just fly for fun and so forth, it's almost like you have no choice. You have to be like a commercialized pilot in many ways. I mean, my thoughts are still the same thing. This test does not make a drone flyer safer in my opinion. So many of the questions are so irrelevant. I mean, just for like a funny fact, in terms of things like a category air law, air traffic rules and procedures and all that, this one, I only got one question wrong of the entire exam and guess what the question was? It was actually pilot related. It was something about a pilot specific license. Like literally, for a pilot, pilot, people that fly airplanes, like there's no way you'll even get this as a drone flyer. And for some reason, they ask you that question. Like, why? So I thought what might help for people who are doing this test if for some reason you feel the need to pass this as soon as possible. I basically did the math and to my personal calculations, only about 40% of the questions I would say is actually related to say a drone law, operating a drone, the rules and stuff like that. So keep that in mind because you need 65% to pass. Even if you aced, for example, the law category with drones and stuff and assuming they're all about drones, you still can't pass. That kind of shows you, you need to kind of understand about the other things as well, like as ridiculous as it is, unfortunately. But requiring 65% to pass Technically, that should be about 23 questions out of 35 that you have to answer correctly. And I kind of, I think it would be interesting just to break it down a little bit if it helps you guys. So I'll list, for example, the actual categories I guess you'll have to answer questions in. Like most of the questions is under air law, air traffic rules and procedures. The next one is RPAS, airframes, power plants, propulsion and systems. They have human factors, meteorology, navigation, flight operations, theory of flight, and radio telephony. 
So while obviously the ideal situation would be you actually understood everything, had time to read over all of the materials to study as if you're becoming a real pilot, I guess you can kind of see if you really want to increase your chances of passing, you kind of have to combine your knowledge of drones and then plus maybe an additional at least like three categories or so in order to equal a pass of 65%. Because keep in mind when I first did the test, I did it basically cold because I was doing it as they advertised as about drone laws and so forth, which, you know, isn't really, I mean, you think about it. And afterwards, I got 62%. So 62% without studying any of this stuff about the aviations and so forth. I think your best chance to pass just based on what I saw is study the basic materials first, just on the regular website, when it comes to the drone laws, things like how far should you have to keep away from a person, where are you allowed to fly and all that, so that's pretty basic. Like the other category I think would be good to actually memorize, and it's pretty easy, is the visual observer. For example, what is a visual observer? How would you classify that? Uh, when can they actually do their job as a visual observer? So what's the stipulation? With a lot of the other questions, unless you have like a really strong foundation of like aviation and all that, it's really random. I mean, for some people they say it's so easy even they have no knowledge of it, but just for me doing it twice as the experiment, it really comes down to how random the questions are. My analogy like I used during the talk with those people today was, if you were doing a swimming exam, like for some reason they're asking questions like, at what temperature does water start freezing? Like I would assume most people would say, well, you know, like zero degrees or something, it's so easy. So then you have people saying, this test is so easy. But then someone else would get a question saying, at what temperature does water start boiling? You say that and most people would be like, what? I don't know, like, how, how would they know? Like, they just plug in like a kettle or whatever. Like, at the same time you say, like, what does that have to do with me being like, you know, a good swimmer with technique and all that, with safety? I mean, do you really need to know that? Hey, don't jump into the water, you know, when it's freezing or something like that, or when it's boiling. Even this time around, there were some questions I never got, which a lot of people said they did. Things about like clouds and so forth. Like I would assume it's just like identifying clouds, but that shows you an example how kind of, I guess, random it is. It's just so silly that I can't actually say what the questions are and all that. Like even if I want to educate people about it, like they say no copying the text showing like the questions and so forth. Like I think that's ridiculous. But hopefully that helps because overall, again, I mean, if I can do it, with the basic drone knowledge and just having some knowledge of the other stuff afterwards, then most likely you can do it too. Although you may want to wait until they actually, if they do, I assume they will, I assume, like they release some kind of guide, you may want to wait because again, you still have until the summer, honestly, to do this. It amazes me like when people have the mindset of, oh, you know, like oh, I was able to do this and so what? I mean, you gotta factor in everybody. I mean, imagine that with a computer. Just because I know a lot about tech and stuff doesn't mean you need to know about things like, you know, difference between IDE cable and SATA before you're allowed to use your computer for the internet.
All right, see you guys later.